I had three batteries here, I've now got two. Right. They're one there was three of them. Yeah. Got one, other two's gone off this way, and I'm right. a battery missing. Right, you've heard what the gentleman's had to say, haven't you? Yeah. Right, I'm now gonna arrest you on suspicion of theft. You understand that? You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you're not mentioned when questions have been later alone in court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. Do you understand that? Yeah. Right, we're gonna cuff you, okay? Put your hands out and come for me. Right, we're going to go to the police station where we're going to interview you in relation to this matter. Alright, how old are you? 16. Right, we're going to get your parents to come down or another adult to come down and sit in with you. Alright? Right, come with me. Hi Sarge, I've arrested uh, this young man on suspicion of uh, theft from a backyard this morning. Um, I was on patrol on Lancaster Park Road when I heard a member of the public shouting. Um, this young male came running towards me. Uh, I stopped him to find out what was going on, walked back to the uh, gentleman concerned and he informed me that this young man and two others were responsible for attempting to steal car batteries from his uh, rear uh, yard. Um, having listened to what he said, I've arrested uh, John on suspicion of theft of those batteries and I've brought him in today um, to question him uh, regarding those matters um, for a prompt and effective investigation. There are other youths outstanding and I intend to do a search of his home address. Okay, thank you. Do you understand the reason for your arrest? Uh, yes. Okay. I'm going to authorise your detention here at the police station in order to secure and preserve evidence and to obtain evidence by way of questioning. Okay. okay. Uh, do you wish me to search him? Yes, please. Yeah. And your first name? John. And your date of birth, please? 290896. And how old are you, please? 16. Okay. Can you just keep that machine, please, John? While you're at the police station, you're going to need an appropriate adult. Is there somebody at home who could act as okay. that? Mum, Dad, or...? Uh, yeah, my mum. Okay. Will they be at home at the moment? Yes. Okay. We'll look after your phone while you're here. You say you need your glasses? Yeah. Gentleman's got a cord on his... Uh... Yeah, we'll take your top off you and give an alternative top to wear while you're here. Right. Just leave that there, yeah, we'll put that in with the rest of your stuff. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you. you put your shoes back on. There. While you're here at the police station, you have certain rights and entitlements. They're set out on these two bits of paper. We'll go through this again when the appropriate adult's present, but I'll be with them for now, okay? They're yours to keep. Okay. Now, while you're here, you can speak to an independent solicitor free of charge by phone or in person. You can have somebody informed that you've been arrested and that you're here at the police station, that's free as well. I'll obviously be telling the appropriate adult you can have somebody else informed if you need them. 
I can also have a look at a book called The Codes of Practice, which covers police powers and procedures. That's a law book, tells the police the powers we have, the rights you have, and how we have to treat people that have been arrested, okay? Now, you can do any of those things now. If you don't want to do them now, you can do them at any time while you're here, because they're ongoing rights, okay? So, at the moment, would you like to speak to a solicitor? Uh, no, no, I'll wait till my mum gets here. Okay. Would you like anybody else informing that you've been arrested? Uh, no. Okay. But we'll show you to a room for now while we contact you, your mum, and while our investigation's ongoing. If you need anything, just ask, okay? Uh, you can take him to cell number eight, please. Just follow me. Okay. I'm going to have to put you in this cell till the mother arrives, all right? You just take your shoes off, all. you're not allowed to go in there. Just put you on the outside, please. Thank you. Got a light in there. If you look there, we've got uh, a buzzer for you to call. We've got a sink. We've got a toilet for you to use, all right? I hope it's not going to take long, but as soon as your mum gets down here, we'll interview you and we'll get it sorted out, all right? In the meantime, just go in there, take your seat. Rights and entitlements, yes. sat down those two bits of paper which I offered him, and I told him he could speak to an independent solicitor free of charge at any time while he was here. He could also have somebody informed that he'd been arrested and he was here at the police station other than yourself. And he could have a look at a book called The Codes of Practice, which covers police powers and procedures, which basically a law tells the police the powers we have, the rights you have, and how we have to treat people who have been arrested. Uh, at that time, he didn't want a solicitor, he didn't want anybody else telling him he was here other than himself, and he didn't want to have a look at the Codes of Practice. Are you in agreement with that? Well, I don't know what's gone on yet, but yeah, sounds okay. all right. But well, you can change your mind at any time, okay? Okay. So Are what else gone on then? Well, I'm going to interview um, John now, so, uh, and I want you in on that interview, okay? Yeah. Um, we're, if the custody sergeant's happy, we'll... Uh, I just, we'll just need to ask if you have an appropriate adult before. I don't even know what that is. Okay. Well, this piece of paper here tells you about your role here and your responsibilities. I'll draw your attention to the uh, four points there that are marked with the arrow. You're here basically to support and advise your son, particularly when he's being questioned by the police. So has he been arrested then? He has been arrested, yes. You're here to observe when the police are acting correctly and fairly and dealing with when you think we're not, tell us immediately. You're also here to assist in communication between your son and ourselves and also to ensure that his rights are protected, which we've just done there by you being present when we're giving his rights. Okay? If you have any questions about your role, just ask me. Well, what's he supposed to have done, anyway? Uh, I'll explain that. I'll explain that all to you. Okay? Do you have that for now? Are we, are we ready to go? Yeah. Right, John, you've just seen me remove the seal on the discs and place them in the DVD recorder, is that correct? Yes. This interview is being audibly recorded and may be tendered in evidence if your case is brought before a court. We're in an interview room at Harrogate Police Station. I'm PC 1781 Andy Collinson, uh, attached to the Harrogate Police Station. At the end of the interview, I'll give you a notice explaining what will happen to the discs and how you can obtain access to them. Do you understand that? Yes. Can you please state your full name and date of birth? John Doe, 29th of August, 96. Also present is, can you give me your full name, please? I'm Enid Doe. And your mum to, to John, is that correct? Yeah. Can I just advise you, Enid, that you are not here to act as an observer. You should advise John and you should observe whether or not the interview is being conducted properly and fairly. You should also assist in communication with John. Do you understand that? Yeah. John, you're not represented by a solicitor at this interview. You are reminded that you have a, uh, a right to free and independent legal advice. You can speak to a solicitor in private at any time of day or night, and this advice is free. You can speak to a solicitor in person. If you do not want to speak to a solicitor in person, then you can speak to one on the telephone. If you do want legal advice, then the interview uh, can be delayed. If you do not know a solicitor, or you cannot contact your own solicitor, then you can ask to see the duty solicitor, or see a list of local solicitors. Do you wish to speak to a solicitor at this time? No. Is there any reason you don't want to speak to a solicitor at this time? No. If at any time uh, during this interview you feel that you do need the uh, advice of a solicitor, let me know, we'll stop the interview and we'll arrange that for you. Do you both understand that? Yeah. Do you understand that? Fine. At the end of the interview, I'll, as I said before, I'll give you a note explaining what will happen to these tapes. 
Before I start to interview you, I must caution you again. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? Yes. Tell me what that caution means to you. Uh, anything I say will be like recorded for further notice, and then if I don't say anything, then the courts will be... I don't know. Basically, the first part of it says you do not have to say anything. Right. OK, I'm still going to interview you. I'm still going to ask you the questions, but it's your right that you don't have to answer my questions. Right. OK. However, it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. So if, I, if you go to court, if this goes that far, and you haven't mentioned something in this interview, the court might take an inference. That means they might think, why haven't you told the police officer that at the time? Right. Do you understand that? Yeah. And anything you do say may be given in evidence. That means that I will make a, a written record of this interview and present it in my report. Right. Okay, do you understand that? Yes. Right, I'm going to start uh, the interview now. You're arrested um, this morning um, on suspicion of theft of batteries. What? The worst case scenario um, for any person in custody having been interviewed would be charged to court. Um, depending how serious the offence was, that person could be um, remanded in custody, that means in a police cell overnight, waiting for court the next day. Potentially, if you're arrested on a Friday, you might be in a police cell until Monday morning um, for the next court uh, sitting. Um, that is very rare, but it does happen, and it does happen with uh, young offenders. Um, th there is quite a scale of, of how people are dealt with whilst they are in custody. Um, simple fact is that um, if somebody makes a, uh, an admission to a, uh, a, a simple offence, i.e. a shop theft, they can be dealt with by what's called a uh, community disposal, um, which is basically admitting to the, to the crime, um, uh, paying for any damages that may have been caused and possibly doing some reparation within the community. Uh, and that would be the end of the matter, signed off by both the offender and the victim. Um, Secondly, we have a youth caution. Uh, a youth caution uh, is recordable uh, and it is uh, something that is held on record. Uh, the young person, again, may have to do reparation within the community, may have to meet with the, um, uh, the victim of the crime and get involved in either writing or verbally apologising. The next stage up from a youth caution is a youth conditional caution where various conditions will be imposed on that young person. They will be um, overseen by uh, officers from the Youth Justice Service. And again, these could include um, courses uh, in relation to substance misuse, consequential thinking, uh, paying a fine, um, making a apologies and uh, doing reparation within the community. And that could either be directly to the victim of the crime or something within the community like working on an allotment, um, delivering leaflets, picking up litter. Um, the next stage up from the youth conditional caution would be a charge to court and where the court will decide the punishment uh, for any either young person or adult. In the case of John Doe, um, he has been through um, the system previously, which has resulted in a youth caution and a youth conditional caution. Subsequently, um, he has been charged with this offence to appear before the court where he will be dealt with by the magistrates uh, and they will decide what sanctions to impose on him um, uh, through, through the court procedures. Could you please identify yourself? John Doe. And your address? 999 Laxby Avenue. Do you know who everybody is in court today? No. Right. Well, you know who's sitting next to you on the side. You've got your solicitor on one side of you and your mum on the other side. What's your name, please? Edith Doe. Thank you. 
and you have the, the YGS officer sitting over here and the prosecution over there. Yeah? yeah. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about the people in court? Uh, fine. Because we three are the magistrates who will sit in this case. You'd like to put the charge? John, there's one charge against you this morning that I need to put to you. Before I do that, I have to check you understand that if you are guilty of the offence and plead guilty straight away, that's when the court will be able to impose the greatest reduction on any sentence. Alternatively, if you're not guilty of the offence and you plead not guilty, there will have to be a trial. And if you're found guilty, then the sentence would likely be greater. Do you understand that? Yes. Yes, sir. Well, John, there's one charge against you, which is that on the 26th of February this year, on Newham Street in Harrogate, you stole car batteries to a value of £25 belonging to George Roberts. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Right. Could you be seated, sir? Yeah, sit down, but listen very carefully to what's been said. And this lady over here is the CPS solicitor who will present the case. Your Worships, I'm Louise Hardy and I appear on behalf of the Crown. John appears before the court today for the offence of theft. This is the ca case as presented. On the 26th of February this year, John, along with two friends, stole car batteries. These were taken from the victim's yard located in Newham Street, Harrogate. Thank you. John, your solicitor, Mrs. McCartney, will now sit, stand up and uh, tell us about you. Um, John has pleaded guilty um, at the first opportunity and he's very remorseful of what he's done. His mum is with him today to show how supportive she is of John and of his future. I would like to point out that the batteries were returned to the victim at the earliest opportunity and no financial losses were occurred to the victim as this, of, of this consequence. John is at college at the moment and he does not want this to impact on his future um, life and his education at the moment and um, so I would like that to be taken into consideration. This group of friends that John was with when the offence happened are a bad influence on John. John is of good character when he's not with these group of people, so I would like that to be taken into consideration. And uh, Mrs. Doe, would you like to say anything about John that you'd like to well, say? He's really good at home. I don't know. I don't. It's not like him to do something like this. He's he's a good lad normally. I think. It's just some of the friends he's met recently since he's been in his last year at school. He doesn't, he doesn't really like it at school. He wants, he, he does much better when he's at school. We'll now hear from the YGS as you've been on reprimand, they'll know a little bit about you and they can tell us a bit more about how, how you've acted since the offence. Mrs. Shu. Good morning, Your Worships. Um, John appears today for the first time for the offence of theft. And if you, as you've heard, he's already received a reprimand in 2011 for criminal damage and a final warning in November 2012 for shoplifting. As my early colleague has outlined, there appear to be some issues evident in John's life that would benefit from some support. Given John's guilty plea and his first time in court, I would recommend that a referral order is the most suitable and proportionate disposal um, that would also manage John's risk of reoffending. Right, John, will you stand up, please? Why did you do such a stupid thing like this? Uh, well, I've traded like scrap metal in before and we were just walking past so I thought we like, saw them and realised how much they were worth. So I didn't think anyone would mind, but then we obviously got caught and police came, so obviously we knew it was wrong. So. Do you not think anything about the victim? At the time I wasn't thinking about anything else, like it just... It's just one of them like flash decisions, you know what I mean, that pop into your head and you're like, oh yeah, but it obviously wasn't the best of ideas. John, is there anything else you'd like to tell us before we go and decide? Uh, just like to say that I'm really sorry for what I've done and I hope you won't be too harsh. Thank you, you may sit down. Okay, can you stand up please, John? Right, we've listened to what everybody said, especially what you and your mum said as well, to, to find out what you really like, and we've come up with certain recommendations. Right, for, for the offence of uh, theft of the battery, we'll make a referral order for four months. Even though you've already been told by the YGS what the referral order is, we listen very carefully to what I have to say. 
you meet a panel of people who give the following fact about your offending. You'll say that you took, took this stuff, you walked away, you didn't think of who it affected whatsoever, you were a gang of other people, all that sort of stuff will be taken into account. We'll ask you to agree and sign a contract. That will include activities to stop you offending again. The order starts on the day you sign the contract. So it's not today, it's the day you sign the contract. You understand that? Yeah. Let's wait for a copy of the order before you leave. And in that order, we would like to see the following. We'd like to see you do some reparation towards the garage. And then we'd like the lines to look at the peer pressure, because we seem to think that's a great part of your offending behaviour, is that the, your peers are uh, working with you. We want you to think first. So you think before you pick something up and walk off with it. Do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah? And we want them to help you get into either training or education so you can fulfil your ambitions and carry on. Have, have you any questions for us? No, that's fine, thank you. Do you understand everything that I've said to you today? Yes. Mrs. Doe, we have had, uh, had your means for, means for handed in here. I see your own benefits. Therefore, the £100 will be taken off you at £5 per week. First payment of 14 days. Do you understand? Yeah, all right. I'm going to... Can, can, is it all right if I, I make John pay some of it back out of his money? We would like to see that, because it's his, his debt, really, even though you have to pay it. It's him just caused it. Yeah, well, I will, because I can't really afford to be doing that for yes. him. Right, so if we, what we'll do is we'll be in touch, we'll write to you with the appointment date. Uh, we'll, the justice officer will come out, Rebecca Allen, that will be, um, and she will write a report. When will they come? Will they come at in the daytime? Um, well, it, what's convenient to yourselves, really, if you're in during the day, that's, you know, that Rebecca will be in touch with a suitable time for all of you, so that you, it's a convenient appointment. Um, can you make sure that you sign this for me, please? Um, yeah. Starting to explain to John why we've come here today and why I've come out to meet you both. Um, as you heard, John was in court um, two weeks ago and he got sentenced to a referral order. The purpose of me coming out today is to get to speak to yourself and also to get to speak to John to find out a little bit more what happened about the offence. So are there any areas that you're concerned about why you think you got into trouble? Um, and we're also going to talk about what else is going on in your life at the moment. So your accommodation, where you're living here, who else lives here? find out a bit more about your education, how you spend time and what you enjoy doing. Then what happens is I go away and I complete an assessment called an asset and I take all the information that you've given me and I speak to people like your teachers from schools um, and what we do from that is we put together a panel report and then when you go to panel for your referral panel meeting they have a copy of that report and from that they'll have a discussion with you um, and you'll put together a contract and in that contract, you look at how you how you pay back to the community for what happened for your offence. All right. right. When I do this, what I'll also do is make sure that I've, once I've written the assessment, I've written the report. I'll also come out back and see you both, so we'll go through it together. So if there's any, so you get sight of it first, and then if you've got any questions or anything, you have the chance to ask them then. It'd be better if you hadn't done any of this in the first place, wouldn't it? Really, because it's been to the police station, yeah. been to court. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, there is, there's a quite a lot, there's a lot that goes on and we appreciate that, the police station, the court, but where we're up to now is really looking at where you can put it right. And this, yeah. the purpose of yeah. this as well is really about us working with you and working with John to make sure that you don't get into this situation again and you don't get into trouble He's again. He's not going to get into any trouble again, are He's you? Not. Excellent, that's what we like to hear. So shall we start then by talking a little bit about the offence itself? Can you tell me what happened that day? I'm Steve Horn, I'm the victim raison officer. Oh, right. Just we spoke. We spoke. Yeah. How do you do? Yeah. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to have a seat. Just, just have a seat. Thanks. Explain to me what's going to happen, because uh, I'm not quite sure where we are with it all. But, uh, right, well, tell me. Uh, I, uh, further to my letter, my phone call. Yep. 
Um, I was trying to explain on the phone that this young person is um, going to appear before a panel next week. Right. Um, it's a panel that is, uh, is drawn from members of the community. There will be two community members being trained by the Youth Justice Service okay. who will sit on the panel with the Youth Justice Officer and they'll, they'll listen to the, the case as such um, that uh, this young person has been convicted of court for. As part of that process, what we like to do is we like to try and get victims, you in this case, right. to come come to the panel. So you've got a time, a chance to explain to the young person how the offence has impacted on you or your business, um, and and, right. and put your views across to them. Right. Now that process is a restorative one. So um, it's a question you you think about um, the things, that, the questions that you would like answers to, i.e. Yes, I would. I'd, you know, like, I'd like to know why it was me, why, you, why yeah. it picked on me, and what his motives were, and I want him to know how much inconvenience it's caused me. Uh, and you probably want some reassurances that it isn't going to happen again. Yeah, yeah, damn right. The whole, the whole idea about this idea, uh, this this process, is to to give the victim a voice. So it's it, it, it's it's conducted in a, a restorative way. I yeah. mean, uh, the chairs of the panel have been have been trained in yeah. restorative yeah. justice. Yeah. It's likely I'll be there as right. well as right. support for yourself. The young yeah. person would have perhaps his parent there or, or a, a guardian or, or um, some sort of parental right. support. And I can freely ask questions. Yeah, well, what will happen is it's... Both yeah. him and his parents? Well, it, the, the, the questions are normally directed at the young person, but yeah. quite often the, the parents will engage in the process. Right. Because, okay. uh, you know, it, it is supposed to be a restorative process. Yeah. What happens is you, you'll come in for a, a small part of the, the hearing um, where you'll be, we'll have this engagement with the young person, talk through the offence and how it's impacted on you. Right. More often than not, they'll give an explanation and they will actually explain to you what's happened. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to this explanation. And, and more often than not, they, they tend to realise that uh, they've made an error and they will yeah. uh, apologise for their conduct. Yeah, well, so is there anything from a direct reparation perspective that you... Um, yes, I think that... If this young man wants to say he's sorry, and I'm sure that he does, I'm told that he does, um, I could I could take him on here and give him some jobs to do here and try teach him some basic skills, maybe washing cars and things like that, sweeping up, basic things, and you know show him what life is like in a garage and that we have to one day go out and make a living. Yes, I'd like a, I'd like to have him here and uh, let him do a bit of work in. in uh, what do you call it? Repar it's reparation. Reparation. Well, what, what, um, what we'll do is I'll speak to our reparation development officer yeah. and ask him to come and have a look at the site yeah. um, and, and he can make an assessment in respect of that yeah. sort of thing. Let's but get him here. Let's get him working for me. So the panel's next Wednesday night. Right. It'd be great to have you there. Right. Can I just ask what you would be seeking from the process? I would like to hear him say I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I would like. John, you have to come through here with your mum and just sit down there and chat. Cheers. Hi. Good evening. Um, thank you. Good. And um, I'll just introduce myself. Um, I'm Becky. I'm going to be chairing tonight's panel. This is my colleague, Chris. Good evening. We're Chris. Um, we're both members of the community. Um, so we're, we're trained by the Youth Justice Service. And of course, Paul um, yeah. is the uh, yacht worker here today. Okay, do you want to introduce yourself to me? My name's John Derb. And who have you brought with you? I've brought my mum. My name's Enid Derb. I'm John's mum. Okay. To introduce, you've met the victim before. This is uh, Tom Roberts. I'm the victim liaison office, Steve. My name's Steve Moore. Okay. Okay. Um, before we start, I just want to mention that everything we say in this room is private and confidential. And um, we will respect everybody in this room and everyone that's going to get the opportunity to have something to say. Okay? Right. right. If you see me writing, I'm just making a few notes. Oh, okay. Okay, so you're here tonight, you've been, you've been to the courts and you've pleaded guilty for theft. Yeah. And the courts have awarded you a four month referral order. Do you understand what a referral order is? I think so, yeah. What do you think it is? Yeah, I think it's, is it like a series of meetings that. Uh, like a youth justice worker that like will help me to make amends and 
Pass it, uh, put back on of course, to the community. Yes. Um, as part of the referral order, we give you reparation, um, and then you have to sit and have meetings with the yacht officer. But we'll discuss today um, what we'll put into the contract. Um, so we'll write up a contract, so we'll go through what we've agreed, and if you're happy with it, you sign it, and then we'll start your order. So can I ask what happened? Well, we was just like, because uh, normally we'll, like sometimes we'll have a like look about some scrap, you know, like all the unwanted metal, make a few quid. And we were walking down this back alley, and we saw these car batteries, and so it's like, oh yeah, look at them. And we thought, yeah, these could be worth a bit of money. They didn't look like they were part of the garage, but they obviously were. And as we was taking the batteries, um, Mr. Roberts came out and started like, shouting, so I ran off and got caught by the policeman and then obviously you know the rest. Like, I went to court, I like, had an interview and that and went to court and got this referral. Okay, and what was going through your head at the time? Oh, uh, just wanted to make some money, like I didn't think, oh yeah, these could be like from there I just thought, oh they might be like deserted batteries that aren't gonna be used anymore. So oh. well, I've definitely started thinking about my actions more and how it affects other people mm -hmm. rather than just what I want and what's best for me. Mm -hmm. So, and I've been thinking about like not getting into trouble and trying to find an actual career so that I don't go back to court because it wasn't a nice experience. Okay, and who do you think are the victims? I think the victims are Mr Roberts for one and then my mum, because she's not had to pay for car costs, she's had to come to these meetings, which she, obviously she wouldn't have had to. And then like, everyone else who's here, because obviously if I didn't do the crime, then you lot wouldn't be here speaking to me now. So. so you feel like you've had a lot of time to reflect back on yeah. what's happened? Yeah. And do you know how mum feels? Yeah. You've spoken to mum about it. She expressed that, yeah. Yeah? What does she say? She just says that she's disappointed because obviously she didn't think that I'd be like, doing stuff like that when I'm not at home. Yeah. How does that make you feel? You won't be disappointed, do you? No, it's not a good feeling, obviously. But I'm trying to make amends by doing like, jobs and stuff around the house, so, yeah. Okay. And of course the main victim in your offence is of course Tom Roberts, who has come here today to speak to you. So, can I just ask what impact this has had on you and your business? It's, it's the principle behind it and the fact that, you know, why should somebody come into my yard and, and take what belongs to me? Um, you know, they're mine. And uh, with this scrap is collected and uh, it's part of our garage income when it's sold. When we've gathered enough together and you know young guys like this don't have the right to, to walk in and help themselves to it. Also I have the police come into my uh, premises to, to sort the things out and make statements and everything, CCTV to go through. It's all time and time is money attending here today. It's all time and you know time is money. Okay, so, John, you've, you've heard what Tom's had to say. How does that make you feel? Do you have a better understanding? Uh, yeah, like, well, now, obviously, I regret doing it, seeing, like, what harm it's caused to the other people. When I did it, I didn't think, oh, yeah, this guy will get, like, annoyed because he's got to come here. And, you know what I mean? I just thought, oh, it's a quick bit of money. But now I know, like, how other people can add... add I know that I won't like, do anything like this again. Mm -hmm. And do you think there's anything you can do to kind of put back the harm you've caused? Well, I could, I was thinking I could go down to Mr. Robert's garage if he knew all that and like, you know, say like clean some cars or, you know what I mean, just help out a bit just to, so that that sort of balances it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's certainly something we'll explore when we're putting together a contract and we'll, we'll talk to the office um, about the idea of, of helping Mr. Robert. Yes, well, on, that, on that subject, can I ask you, John, I know you're, you're at school and also notice you're at college doing some sort of construction work. What, what does that entail? I'm only trying to think of something that might be useful for Mr. Roberts. Uh, construction's really like building with the bricks and 
stuff like that. It's not really anything to do with cars, but I got like a good like manual labour sort of thing, so I don't mind like getting my hands dirty. Right. So. So you'd be happy to sort of do. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not. Like. It's not a problem. So. Okay. I'm just um, on the reparation aspect because the conversation is going to take place after we've left the room, Mr. Roberts, about reparation with this young man. What's your views on um, um, doing some direct reparation for you? Have you got any views on that? Um, if he, this young man would like to come down and do some work for us, we can find some things for him to do. They may not be the pleasantest of jobs, but yes, we can find him something to do, some cars to wash and sweep, you know. Um, Maybe even sorting some scrap out for us. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, for coming along. Um, we'll just ask you to leave the room now so we can so, yeah. speak to John. So, John, we've explored what's happened and um, what impact it's had on the victims. Should we, should we just explore? you and how it's affected you and, and how we can move forward? Uh, well, I think that maybe because I, I don't really want to go back to school next year because I don't really like it. I was thinking we could um, try find something that I'm like, interested in, like the construction, so maybe if I could get an apprenticeship somewhere or something like that, it could help me find one of them. Cause I think that if I get something that I really want to focus on and I really like, then it'll just, like, I won't be wanting to offend anymore because I'll have something that I want to keep and obviously if I offend again I won't be able to do it. So. Mm -hmm. Would you say you've got um, a tendency for impulse and, and not really thinking of consequences? Do you think that's something that happens? Yeah, t to be fair, yeah. Like, even, like, I can't explain it, but like, there's a few examples of where I've just done something. And it might not be like as serious as this but it's like I've done something without thinking and then afterwards I'm like oh shouldn't have done that but like it can be even stuff like just around the house and uh, yeah yeah I don't think he means any harm he's just daft he doesn't think he just thinks about himself that is his main trouble he just thinks about himself and what he wants when he wants it but he doesn't mean any harm and he's always sorry after he's done something but a bit too old for that. Maybe. Yeah, I think, you know, as part of this contract, as part of the referral world, we'll definitely put something in there about kind of consequential thinking and, and how, you know, to reduce offending in the future and just to think about things before you do them. Okay. How do you feel about giving Mr. Roberts an apology? Maybe, I don't know, face to face or writing a letter? Yeah, I think, I think that's fine. Maybe not writing a letter because. Uh, I think I'm better with words than I am with like writing, so I'd rather do it straight to his face. But yeah, I think that could be good. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll put that in the contract for you to do. And, and maybe if we do some reparation with Mr. Roberts, then maybe... Yeah, actually. I think you should. I think if you, you've taken something from him, you should go down and work for him. That's, that's how it should be. Yeah. Okay. You got any questions? Yeah, John, just, just a couple of things, John. Obviously, your mother's very supportive here today, because she's here with you today. Can you tell me something about your brothers and sisters? Uh, well, I've got a younger brother, mm -hmm. and obviously he's not as old as me and done, like, not sort of as equipped, so mum has to spend more time with him than she does me, so sometimes I feel like a bit left out. That's, that's sometimes why I do stupid stuff like this, but not all, like, I'm not saying that I blame it on my mum because she's looking after the little kids but you know what I mean sometimes it just feels like you're being left out so. is your father aware of what's happened uh yeah my father's been told he's supportive thank you okay is there anything that you feel on that we could do some work in any areas I think it he needs to get himself straightened out, he needs to get a job. Uh, he can't get a job just yet, but when he finishes school he needs to get a job. Um, I know it's hard with me having the other kids, but he's quite a good lad at home, he does help. Um, 
helps when he can, and then he forgets himself and goes out and does something stupid. I, I, you know, I don't like them guys that you hang around with, those mates that the ones that you were with. I, th I don't know why you bother with them. They just get you into more and more trouble. Yeah. What other things are you interested in? What other things are you interested in? I like playing football. I used to play that quite a lot. You don't play anymore? No. No. Yeah, that's that? because you hang around with them. You should do. Do you think peer pressure is an issue? Do you think people are, you're affected by people around you? It's not really, yes, but no, it's like, it's not really peer pressure, like, they're not coming up to me and going, yeah, yeah, and I'm like, no, no, like, forcing me to do it, it's just like, sort of like, an all-rounder idea, if you know what I mean, so... Just because you don't think, yeah. you just think you'll go off with them. What we're looking here is at the risk issues, the, the reasons that you might get involved in turning a gang. Now, um, Becky, I think, has talked about the impulsivity doing things without thinking um, but the other thing is a lack of assertiveness a lack of your ability to say no to your friends when they want to do something you know is a bit stupid yeah okay i think i think we want to be putting that, that in the context as well mm -hmm. and then we were talking about you, you know your jobs and finding a job and maybe something else to do um, there's also a voluntary element within the contract where we can put things in, maybe helping in your CV, maybe doing, you know, going to the, to the job centre or to whoever to, to look at other things. So maybe that's something we could put in your contract. Yeah, that sounds, sounds yeah? good. John, while we've all been talking, I've been writing the, the contract so we don't waste any time. Um, it's important to remember that your order effectively starts today. Now you have freely negotiated the contract with us around the table. But once you've signed it, you are bound by it and you must keep the terms of it strictly. And if you don't, we do have a warning process, but ultimately, if you don't keep to it, you will come back to the panel or you'll have to give an account to yourself. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, the purpose of the contract is two part. It's firstly to agree reparation to the victim. And we have done that by saying that you're going to apologise to the victim face to face and you're going to do some work for him in his yard. Yeah. Okay. And the second part of it is we've looked at the risks, the reasons why you might get into trouble again. And we have decided amongst ourselves that they are going to be your impulsivity, your lack of self-control if you like, um, some negative peer pressure and the lack of constructive things to do with your time. So what we've agreed to put in the contract are things to counteract those things that affect you. Do yeah? you understand? Yeah. So you're going to do firstly one-to-one -one work on your consequential thinking skills, that's thinking through what you're going to do before you do it. And you're going to do that with your case officer who is Becky. Yeah. Secondly, you're going to do some work on helping you resist peer pressure, that's assertiveness, basically being able to say no to your friends. Okay. Um, and thirdly, that we'd like to put in the contract is for you to do some job searches with Rebecca, who is your case officer, with a view to getting some work. Okay. Now, if you're happy with that, I'm going to ask you to sign the contract your mum to sign it as well, and for Becky as the chair to sign it on behalf of the panel here. Okay? Yes. Right. How are you? Very well, thank no you. Sleep. you now then, you remember John? you're the one that stole my batteries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going right. to say, do you remember John from a referral panel meeting? I do, I do, I do indeed. Well, we've come down today so that John can start doing his reparation for you. Right. Um, I think we agreed 10 hours. 
at the referral panel meeting. So, okay. what jobs have you got right. lined up for well, him? Well, I've got plenty lined up for you. We start by washing up some cars, a few cars to wash. And hopefully, at the end of this, you're going to learn a better way of life and learn the workings of the inside and outside workings of the garage and do something useful with your life for a change. All right? Okay, let's get this car washed. Smashing. Excellent. You can use the brush. Well, use whatever you want. I don't mind. But that's my car. I want it washing. And when we finish that one, I've got plenty more. Ah. Yeah. I'm afraid life's not as easy as, as it uh, might seem sometimes. Sometimes we've got to do a bit of hard work. John, you don't look like you're shy of hard work at all. You're doing a very good job there. All right, John. When we first met, we started talking. We looked at your offence. One of the things that um, became quite clear was that your friends seemed to have quite a bit of influence on you and what happens. And it was your friends who had quite a bit of an influence the day that you took your batteries. So what I wanted to do today's session was to look at the people and what we're going to call your social circle. And then we're going to look at whether these people are a good influence on you, in which case we're going to draw a nice big green flag next to them, or whether you think they're a bad influence on you, we're going to draw a red flag next to them. Right. All right. So I've put you in the middle, because this is you, and this is you and your, this is the circle that comes out of you, your group of friends. So, first of all, I want you to put next to you who, who or which person has the most influence over you. And it may not just be friends, it might be family as well. What, using these? Yeah, these are, and I've got a variety of different faces here. So these faces might relate to a person you're thinking of in particular. Uh, so who has the most influence over you? Probably my mum. Your mum. Obviously she's learned that a lot. So I'll put your mum there. Okay, so we've got your mum there. You know the two, the two guys who offended with you? Whereabouts would they go closeness to you? Uh, well, they are like, well, if that's close, probably about, like... They're about there. So they've got influence on you, but they seem to be quite far away. Well, yeah, but... So would you say that they have, because if that's how much influence on you, they've, you your mum's got lots of influence on you. So, Dexter, how does he kind of impact on you and your decisions and what you get up to? Uh, well, it's not that it like, uh, like forces me to do anything like that, but say if we're just walking like with the batteries and he goes, oh yeah, wouldn't it be funny to do that? And then you think, oh well, yeah. to read the report that has been written? Not yet, no. no. Would you like to look at a copy or would you like me to just go through it? Uh, yeah, you can just go through it. Yeah? Okay. Very, very positive. Um, you've attended all of your agreed supervision appointments and you've done three days of reparation. Do you want to expand and tell me what you've been doing? Uh, in the meetings with Rebecca, I was doing consequential thinking, so she made me like like weigh out my options before I actually do actions and so I think that's helped me a lot because I haven't been into trouble since. Brilliant. We also had uh, discussions about my impulsiveness mm -hmm. which has made me less impulsive so I think that's really benefited and it's like obviously I don't just think about myself now you know, I think about others and how they feel and with the reparation uh, I, at first I was cleaning cars and I was like sweeping up and you know what I mean, just like the general stuff. Then I started like sorting scrap out and I think Mr. Roberts thought I was a good little helper so he 
put me some additional work on and now I get paid for working there. Brilliant, brilliant. So is that, have you been able to speak to, to Mr Roberts about what's happened? Uh, yeah, I, like before I went and did any reparation I went down and apologised to him face to face and just like said that I am sorry for all these inconveniences because he had to come to like the panel meeting and you know I mean he had to go to the police station and stuff like that as well I think so. Does that make you feel good? Or? Yeah, when he like he accepted it, it was like, yeah, thank you. Like he was like, oh, yeah, it means a lot. So it yeah it made me feel better to know that I've actually done something. Excellent. Like so how does Mum feel? There's been change. I think he's I think he's grown up a lot. I think it's made um, a lot of difference. He did take it seriously. He didn't like going to court. I didn't like going to court, but um, I think he. It's been good for him, and he's he's not got into any trouble since he's been he's been fine at home. Um, he's finished school now. I think he's learnt his lesson really. John, really well done. This is a good report. Rebecca's really enjoyed working for you. She describes as respectful in sessions, openly discussing your behaviour, and a thoughtful young person. We're really pleased the way you handled this order. Well Thank done. you. Well done.